Hey guys, um, welcome to another lesson. Um, we're still on bang and conciliations. Um, in the previous videos, um, if you haven't watched them, we looked at the basics of bang and conciliation, understanding the perspective of the business and also understanding the perspective of the bank um, when it comes to bank reconciliation. And we also did um, an example um, where we updated the bank account and we also um, prepared the bank reconciliation statement. So in this lesson, we'll be doing a uh, November 2017 question paper, which is question one on bank reconciliations and internal control. Let's dive in. Um, so um, in this um, question here, uh, the first part is 1.1. It is asking us to answer true or false in the three statements given there. Um, in this page here, I have an answer book, which I'm going to be answering in. Um, so I'll be moving between the two pages. So please make sure that you're paying attention. So indicate whether the following statements are true or false. Write on the true or false next to the question number. Okay. So the first statement, a favorable balance in the bank statement is indicated as a debit. Um, that is false in the bank statement. A favorable balance will be reflected as a credit. We've already spoken about this in the previous video, so go and check it. So um, the answer there is false. And then the second question there, it says a post-dated check received must be entered on the date received. The post-dated check received must be entered on the date received. That is false. If a business receives a posted a check, it must only record the posted a check once it presents it to the bank. So it's going to be false. And then the last question there, it says an issued check that has been lost must be canceled in the CRJ. That is true because when the check is issued, what happens first is that um, what happens first to that check is that it is recorded um, in the cash payments journal. And then if it doesn't end up being presented in the bank statement, it should then be canceled in the cash receipts journal. So that is going to be true. So you can say true. So three easy marks. And then um, the following question um, is on Menzies traders. The following information um, relates to Menzies traders for June 2017. Um, and then the first question there, it says, calculate the following on the 30th of June 2017, the correct totals for CRJ and CPJ, and then calculate the bank account balance. And then it follows with the bank reconciliation and um, the other questions. So in this video, I'll just be answering um, the first question 1.2.1, and then in the next video, I will answer the bank reconciliation statement and also deal with the, with the internal control question. All right, let's um, go into it then. Um, in the answer book here, you can see that we've been given the provisional totals for CRJ as well as for CPJ. And what we're supposed to do then is to make sure that we are adding on top of this information any adjusting differences. And remember guys, um, when we are what we update our bank account with um, is adjusting differences. So we need to take into account adjusting differences here and errors that have been made by the business. All right, let's go. So the first information, uh, we've been given a bank reconciliation statement of the previous month. Uh, we opened with the 1450 uh, with the outstanding deposits here, and then we have the outstanding checks. If you look at the first check, check number 605, it is dated 16 December 2016. So a check that is dated 16 December 2016 on the 30th of June, it is older than six months. And if it is older than six months, um, that check will be cancelled. So it will no longer be presented in the bank in the bank statement. So it was recorded in the cash payments channel. That is why it's in the bank reconciliation statement but it has never appeared in the bank statement. And now we know that it will, ne it will never appear because it is, a, it is stale. We can't present that check to the bank. So we're gonna have to cancel this check um, in the CRJ because when it was issued, it was recorded in CPJ. So we're gonna have to cancel this check in the CRJ. And I'm also just gonna highlight it so that I make sure that I've dealt with it and I don't repeat 
it on the next reconciliation statement. So we're gonna record that in the CRJ um, and add a uh, <coughs> 9750. 9750. And then remove. Um, the other checks, they look fine to me unless there's another information that we get. And then the second source of information is just giving us those provisional totals that you already have in the answer book. And then let's go into C. So they say here entries in the cash journals. So these are entries in the cash journals for June 2017, but they do not agree with the bank statement. So there's um, EFT 19, so EFT 19 dated 11 June. Um, the details are to paint core, it's 5,500. And then there's also the deposit slip. So maybe these are outstanding, there's an outstanding EFT and also an outstanding deposit, but let's just read the note. So they say note EFT 19 was incorrectly entered in the CRJ instead of the CPJ. So you can see here that this is an error, so this is not a case of um, this is not a case of whether this was only recorded in the cash channels, but was not recorded in the bank statement. This was recorded in the bank statement, but it was recorded incorrectly in the books of the business. So this is an error made by the business, and the business needs to correct that error. So in order to correct that error, so we recorded five thousand five hundred in the CRJ instead of the CPJ. So what we need first to do is to cancel um, that amount that is in the CRJ. So you're gonna add 5,500 in the CPJ to, cu to cancel the 5,500 in the CRJ. And then what you're gonna do after that is to subtract, is to add again in the CPJ to actually take into account the actual entry that was supposed to happen in the first place. So you cancel and then you do what you're supposed to do in the first place because that was not done, all right. So we're going to be adding 5,500 twice in the CPJ and that adds up to 11,000. So you can go about it in different ways. I mean, you can put it as 5,500 um, and add it twice or you can just um, add as one amount. So I'm going to go here. So for me, I'm just going to make it the same amount and just say 11,000. Knowing that, okay, I've taken that one into account. And then let us move on. At the deposit slip 451, dated 25 June, cash sales. So I suppose this one, it does not agree with the bank statement because it appears in the cash channels. In this case, it would appear in the cash receipts channel, but it is not appearing in the bank statement. So what does that tell you? It tells you that this is an unpresented deposit or an outstanding deposit. So it will go, it is a timing difference and therefore it will go into the bank reconciliation statement of June. Let's move on. And then we also have, um, and then we also have other entries here. The journal is the CPJ. Let's check 870 dated 25th of June to VN limited. And then we also have an EFT 21 um, that is dated the 30th of June to SJ stores for 2,250. So let us think about this a little bit. So we have um, check 870 for 16,800. It is appearing in the cash payments channel of June, right? But it is not appearing, um, it is not appearing in the bank statement. There's no error that has been mentioned to be made. Um, there's an EFT, it is, not, it is appearing in the cash payments journal but it is not appearing in the bank statement. So to me, this looks like timing differences. And therefore, we will sort this out when we do the bank reconciliation statement because at the end of the month, they seem to be outstanding. Understand? Cool. Let's continue to information D. So information D, they say these are items on the bank statement dated 30th of June, 2017 that do not agree with the cash channels. So now we've got the bank and we're comparing with the journals and these transactions um, in June, they only appear in the bank statement, but they do not appear in the cash channels. So here we'll be finding our adjusting differences. And we know that adjusting differences are adjusted when we update the bank account. The bank account is made up of the CRJ and the CPJ. So you need to keep that in mind. So the first transaction that is there is the deposit. Um, it's actually dated now 17 May uh, for 30,000. 
So if you go firstly, before you just say, I'm just gonna put that, I'm gonna take that deposit and add it into my cash receipts channel. What you first need to check, you need to check the previous month bank reconciliation. If you look at the previous month bank reconciliation, this was the amount. So this was the amount in the 17th. So this 30,000 is actually this, uh, sorry, they're not going too far. Is actually this 30,000. So um, it means that this amount was recorded um, in May in the cash receipts channel, but it was not in the bank accounts, in the bank statement for May, but now it's appearing on the bank statement for June. So you don't need to do anything in this case, because if you record it again, in the cash receipts channel for June, you are adding it twice. You've, it's, it's already done, we're just gonna cancel. Well, we're just not gonna do anything about it. We're gonna highlight it so that we don't um, put it again. So that one is closed. And then we have a check um, of 812, data, check 812 for 8,550. Let us go again and look at the, uh, and look at the bank reconciliation statement of the previous month. So check A12, 8,550. So it's already been accounted for as well. So we're just gonna highlight it and not record it again um, as it has reconciled. So check A12, we're done. And then there's a debit order for insurance. So the debit order for insurance, this is a transaction that you only become aware of at the end of the month and it is not um, in the previous month's bank reconciliation. So we need to update our cash payments channel with uh, this um, amount for insurance. So we're gonna add 2,290, I think it is 2,290. Yes, it is 2,290, um, let's just go back. Yes, 2,290. So I've recorded this one now. And then there's also a direct transfer to Painco EFT 19. So we already understood what happened here is that this one, uh, where it was supposed to go into the cash, cash payments channel, but it went to the CRJ. Uh, but now we've actually updated our books um, already uh, with uh, this direct transfer to Painco. So we've dealt with this one. And then we have a check 816 for 13,590. Let us go back and check our bank reconciliation statement for the previous month. So we do have this check here. So we do not need to do anything again with this check. We we'll leave it like this. And then we know that it is, it is reconciled. So we don't need to do anything further than what we've done now. And then moving on, um, there's a deposit dated 31 May, 05, 31 May for 16,200. Let us go and check um, our bank reconciliation statement. Yes, um, it, is, it has already been appearing in the bank reconciliation statement of the previous month. So we need to highlight it so that you don't put it again. <coughs> and now uh, let me just highlight it also here. Cool. And then um, there's a direct transfer from S. Smith. So if there's a direct transfer from S. Smith, we only become aware of that at the end of the month and it's for 16,500 and therefore we need to increase our cash receipts channel, 16,500. So we see 16,500. And then moving on, um, Check 823 for 9,200 and they say see note below. Let's check, they say the bank statement is correct. Let us see what you have done in the cash payments channel and we'll find that information in the, um, we'll find this information here. So here we have a check dated 31 May 2017 for 2,900. We were supposed to record 9,200 and they did say that the bank statement is correct. So we need to correct this one. Uh, we need to correct this one in the, cash payments journal, no, yes, cash payments journal. So it was supposed to be 9,200, but instead we recorded 2,900. So we need to top it up. So we need to top it up. So we're gonna say, um,
So we need to top it up. We're gonna say 9,200 and then we're gonna say minus 2,900. You can write it as one amount and just say 6,600 or you can write it this way. I decided to write it this way so that I make sure that I show all the amounts. And I also show my calculation. All right. So um, now we're happy that this check has also appeared, but it was just an error that was made, but it is not a, gonna appear again in the bank um, reconciliation statement. So if you look at the bank reconciliation statement for, from the previous month, all the checks um, and all the deposits that are outstanding have been taken into account, except for one check, which is actually post-dated, uh, uh, dated 15 August 2017. So this check is gonna appear again in the next bank reconciliation statement along with um, uh, this, this check here, as well as this EFT here. And then along with the outstanding deposit of 40,500 here. All right. And then, um, so we've dealt with this and then there's an unpaid check. So unpaid check, that is a dishonored check. So the bank previously would have, uh, so what would have happened here is that we previously would have recorded this information in the cash receipts journal because that the data was paying and then when we presented the check to the bank, um, the bank came back saying, no, this check is, um, is dishonored for whatever reason that the, the, the bank decided not to honor the check. Uh, it could be insufficient funds, um, the check could be dirty, the signatures maybe is not right, whatever the case may be. Um, so we need to reverse this um, then in the cash payments journal because when it was received, it was recorded in the cash receipts journal. So we'll go 750. Cool. And then the, the last entry there is the service fees. So the service fees is 1,220. And you can see there's a note at the bottom. It says service fees were overstated by 900. The bank will rectify the problem next month. So these fees were overstated by uh, 900 and then the bank will rectify the error next month. So there's an error that has been made by the bank and we'll rectify the error um, when we do the bank reconciliation statement. But for the sake of recording this now, the, the real bank, the real service fees should have been 1,200 minus 900, which is about 320. So what I will do, um, I prefer to do it like this. So I'm gonna add the full 1,220 on the cash receipts journal. And then in the cash payments journal, I'm just gonna reverse the 900 so that anyway, I have 320 and then we're gonna deal with the 900 in the bank reconciliation statement. And then we need to add up these totals here for CPJ um, the total for C, sorry, the total for CFJ is going to be 117,650, and then add up the total for CPJ. The total for CPJ is going to be 107,480. And that brings us to the end of our lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at how to do the bank reconciliation statement for the same question paper and also answer the internal control questions. Thank you for joining. Cheers.